<laughs> Boy, there are some times when the devil really doesn't want you to do something. <laughs> and he will he will interfere uh, in the most subtle of ways. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, hello. <laughs> this is take three now. No, take two now, excuse me, of um, doing this, uh, attempting to do this video. Yes. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures. You're going to see the thumbnail. Now that thumbnail comes to me, was given to me from a beloved brother. And um, you're going to see the title of this video. We're going to discuss something that a lot of the Church of the Living God might be a little, um, you know, hesitant on. And that is concerning ghosts, spirits, devils, poltergeist kind of stuff, that kind of matter. Okay. I, I always find it very curious that um, I've run into people who are of the Church of the Living God. When the topic of ghosts, spirits, hauntings, poltergeist, now poltergeist is obviously, we know this genius, okay, is obviously not in the authorized version of the scriptures, we know that. Um, but I've always found it interesting that there are some of the Church of the Living God, when we, when we bring this stuff up about ghosts and hauntings and uh, as they call it, paranormal activity, um, seems that there are those who are skeptical. And my, my response is always, um, you're of the Church of the Living God, you, you believe in the Holy Ghost, right? Like, of course. Remember, Satan is a counterfeit. He is anti-Christ. Okay, I, I remember there. I, I ran into a lot of Christians. <laughs> remember, there's a huge difference between a Christian and someone who is saved, born again, converted of the Church of the Living God. Big difference. Okay, uh, I remember meeting quite a few Christians where this topic would come up. It's like I don't believe in ghosts and that kind of stuff. Same thing. Really, huh? you, you believe in the Holy Ghost, don't you? It's like, well, yeah. God is a spirit. See, you read in the Bibles, God is spirit. <laughs> okay? Some somebody left a comment, um, didn't even watch all the, any of the one of the videos dealing with the Godhead. Um, and he misquoted just terribly. Uh, <laughs> Father is spirit. It is, uh, as far as the scriptures is concerned, God is a spirit. God is a spirit. That very important letter, A, which a lot of the Bibles take out that letter, A. God is spirit. The scriptures tell you God is a spirit. Why is that A so important? So that you, through the scriptures, can discern which one is which. Okay? So, there again. Like I said, I know there are those of you of the Church of the Living God who don't really want to believe in ghosts and hauntings and stuff like that. But remember, God is a spirit. That A is there for us of the Church of the Living God, who are saved, born again, converted, that we can search the scriptures, and through the scriptures we can discern which is which. Okay? All right? So we're going to be looking into this. We're uh, also going to use another resource. We're going to use this, uh, part of the testimony of Alberto Rivera. Okay? 
Because when you get into this topic about <laughs> ghosts and you look here on YouTube, okay? Ghost hunters and all this nonsense, ghost haunted houses. And then you see mm, these people with these EMF readers and these video things and going into haunted houses and they'll hear certain noises and ugh, crazy, <laughs> okay? Um, is some of that legit? I don't know. I don't know. What I find funny is when when they are when you come across a video or something that might actually be legitimate, you get lost people uh, making comments to these devils. Uh, Go to the light. We're here to help you. <laughs> you 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 dumb fools. You don't even know what you're dealing with. <laughs> and that's the thing. That's the thing. These ghost hunters that you see. Like I said, do a YouTube search. You know, ghost hunters or go haunted houses and EMF and strange things. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Yeah, you can liken this, I guess, uh, onto how they tried to bring out that thing about, you know, E.T. <laughs> Eddie Torres, okay, um, you know, aliens and stuff like that. I don't believe in aliens. I know there are such things as devils who will masquerade to put it off onto people that they might be aliens or a haunted house. But enough of my rambling on that. Get your authorized version of the scriptures and turn with me in your authorized version of the scriptures to Deuteronomy chapter 7. We are going to begin reading Deuteronomy chapter 7. We're going to read a good portion of Deuteronomy chapter 7. We're going to skip a little, but we're, we're going to go through quite a, quite a good portion of this chapter in the scriptures. Deuteronomy chapter 7. We're going to begin with Deuteronomy chapter 7, verses 1 on to verse 11. Please, get the scriptures, follow me along, okay? Let us begin. When the Lord thy God shall bring thee into the land whither thou goest to possess it, and hast cast out many nations before thee, the Hittites, and the Girgashites, Girgashites, and the Amorites, and the Canaanites, and the Perizzites, and the Hivites. That's significant because if you remember in the book of Joshua, how the Hivites who were of Gabaon, the Gabaonites were Hivites, they went to Joshua Wiley, and uh, they, they fooled Joshua and the Israelites, okay? Might remember that. And they made a covenant with them without going to the Lord. The Hivites were a people slighted for destruction by our Lord. Okay? We'll see why. Let's continue. And the Jebusites, seven nations greater and mightier than thou. And when the Lord thy God shall deliver them before thee, thou shalt smite them and utterly destroy them. Thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor shew mercy unto them. So... Those who are called of the Lord, you know, to be separate, holy, other than that, the instruction and in righteousness here for us is we're not supposed to be of that. We're in this, the world. We're not supposed to be of the world, okay? That's the instruction for righteousness. Let's read now. Neither shalt thou make marriages with them, Thy daughter shalt thou, thou shalt not give unto his son, nor his daughter shalt thou take unto thy son. So the Israelites, the Hebrews of Shem, coming into the land of the Canaanites, were not to what? Make marriages with those of these nations who were slighted for destruction. Why? Verse 4. For they will turn away thy, thy son from following me. Hmm. 
that they may serve other little g gods. Newsflash for you. And you, we of the Church of the Living God, we already know this, but there are a lot of people who are not saved who watch these videos. So bear with me, brethren. When you see a little g uh, here in the scriptures, usually it's referring on to devils. Okay? Big G, God, is referring on to our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. Obviously. But usually when you see a little g, God, that's usually referring on to devils. Usually. The usually is uh, there's a part where um, the scriptures say, ye are gods, referring on to people being, meaning that man, because of disobedience from the Garden of Eden, uh, knows what good is uh, good and evil is now because uh, we disobeyed, you know, Adam and Eve. Made, did a whole video on that uh, somewhere. If I can remember, I'll try to put it in the description box, okay? But usually, you see the little G gods, it's reference on to devils, okay? Remember, we are supposed to be wise concerning that which is good and simple concerning that which is evil. It's very simple. If it's little G, it's not of God the Father, okay? If it's little G, usually it, it means devils, okay? Let's continue. So will the anger of the Lord be kindled against you and destroy thee suddenly. Okay? Now, concentrating on verses 2 and 3 again. And when the Lord thy God shall deliver thee them before thee, these nations that were slighted for destruction, thou shalt smite them and utterly destroy them. Thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor shew mercy unto them. Neither shalt thou make marriages with them. Thy daughter thou shalt not give unto his son, nor his daughter shalt thou take unto thy son. All right, now, hold your place here. Go to Exodus chapter 23. Exodus chapter 23. See, we who are of the church of the living God, we are not to mingle with the things of the world. We are in the world, but we are not of the world. So we as the church and living God, we are not to allow these things of the world in our lives and where we live, uh, be uh, subject ourselves onto them by choice, you know, meaning, you know, you go in like to a grocery store, some of these places have this satanic music going on like our best friend brother alexander hartley he'll go around singing hymns you know which we start doing you know praise the lord for that but we are not supposed to mingle ourselves with that we are in the world we are not of the world okay remember what fellowship can the temple of god have with idols devils okay stuff like that so let's read in Exodus chapter 23, verses 26 on to verse 33. There shall nothing cast their young, nor be barren in thy land. The number of thy days I will fulfill. I will send my fear before thee, and will destroy all the people to whom thou shalt come. And I will make all thine enemies turn their backs unto thee. And I will send hornets before thee which shall drive out the Hivite, the Canaanite, and the Hittite from before thee. Notice that it says the Hivite first there in that, uh, in that verse. I will not drive them out from before thee in one year, lest the land become desolate, and the beasts of the field multiply against thee. By little and little I will drive them out from before thee, until thou be increased and inherit the land. And I will set thy bounds from the Red Sea, even unto the Sea of the Philistines, and from the desert unto the river. For I will deliver the inhabitants of the land into your hand, and thou shalt drive them out before thee. And thou shalt drive them out before thee. Thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor with their 
Little G, gods, devils. Okay? They shall not dwell in thy land, lest they make thee sin against me. For if thou serve their gods, which are devils, it will surely be a snare unto thee. Hmm. Hmm. Go back to Deuteronomy chapter 7, picking up now at verse 5. But thus shall ye deal with them. Ye shall destroy their altars, and break down their images, and cut down their groves, and burn their graven images with fire. Hence the way to get rid of occultic, devilish, satanic stuff is to burn it, smash it, destroy it. Burn it. Okay? Verse 6. A lot of instruction and in righteousness this is for us of the church of the living God. Okay? For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. Holy. Set apart. Separate. Other than that. Other than that. Holy. Okay? Other than. Okay? The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself, above all people that are upon the face of the earth. And if you were to cross-reference this with the entire chapter of Deuteronomy chapter 4, which we're not going to look at, it tells you, okay, that God chose Israel, the nation of Israel, to go into the land of Canaan, to be his representative very, very similar to we as the Church of the Living God today as ambassadors for Christ. Okay? Okay? Verse 7. The Lord did not set his love upon you nor choose you because ye were more in number than any people. For ye were the fewest, all, fewest of all people. You got to love that right there, brother. Sister, don't you? See, Catholicism tells you, well, obviously we're the true church that Christ founded because there are so many of us. Remember the story of Gibeon? How he had way too many people and the Lord's like, that, that, wait, 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 time out. There are way too many people that are with you. So we got to weed some of these out because then you guys will think that, you know, because there's so many of you that I had nothing to do with it. See, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, is the God of the little guy. Keep that in mind. You lost people? Keep that in mind. Okay? The Catholics will tell you, be part of Christ's church that he founded. <clears throat> mm, feeling a little congestion coming on. Beg your pardon. But yeah, come be a part of Christ's church that he founded. <laughs> Yeah, the Antichrist, yeah, not Jesus Christ, okay? Why Why should we do that? Because we're the biggest. If Jesus Christ had a church, it would be the biggest one. The Lord did not set his love upon you nor choose you because ye were more in number than any people. For ye were the fewest of all people. The fewest. God's a God of the little guy. Don't forget that. Don't forget that. But because the Lord loved you, and because he would keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, hath the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of bondmen from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Ooh, this, this is just so rich in instruction and righteousness for us, the church of the living God, okay? Our Lord Jesus Christ, through the death, burial, and resurrection, through the blood that he shed on the cross, okay? For those of us who came to him on his terms, broken, contrite, and in fear of the Lord, called upon the name of the Lord, and he saved us, okay? He has taken us out 
from this world, okay, out from Egypt. Remember, typology, Egypt for our instruction and in righteousness is a type of the world. And brought us out from under the headship of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, type of Satan. Okay? Real rich here in instruction and in righteousness. And he did, and in this dispensation, we Gentiles were grafted in to the tree of the Jew to make them jealous, to bring them on to God. Okay? Again, I ask of you, do you think the Jew today is jealous of what is called Christianity? But Oh, yeah, yeah, you're, you're a Christian. Oh, like uh, Kenneth Copeland, right? Or like T.G. Jake, T.D. Jakes or that Joel Osteen guy. Oh, oh, you're a Christian? Oh, you mean Catholic? Yeah, see, that's what you lost people are made to equate what is Christian because of Roman Catholicism. That's why I and several are advocates for, hey, we're not Christian. We're of the Church of the Living God. And that is scriptural, by the way. Okay? But see, God called us out from that. And see, when those of the Church of the Living God go to try to bring part of that into their home, into their personal lives, when we are called to be holy, other than that. Okay? Okay? Let's continue. Verse 9 on to verse 11. Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God. Not, not Buddha, not Muhammad, not Allah. Don't get me started on that, okay? Not your little wafer cookie, okay? Not, <coughs> not Francis. Not Francis, definitely not Sosa, no, but our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, okay? Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations, and repayeth them that hate him to their face, to destroy them. He will not be slack to him that hateth him. He will repay him to his face. Thou shalt therefore keep the commandments and the statutes and the judgments which I command thee this day to do them. Go to 1 Samuel chapter 16. I want to show you a very good example of this. 1 Samuel chapter 16. And we are going to be reading verses 14 on to verse 23. King Saul, the first king of Israel, the anointed of the Lord. Okay? He was he was given he was given specific instructions, okay? to go and destroy the, um, uh, the Amalekites. You read about that in 1 Samuel chapter 15, I believe it is, okay? But King Saul feared men, not the Lord. Throughout the reign of King Saul, he was half and half, half in, half out, okay? He didn't adhere to the statutes, the commandments, the precepts of the Lord, okay? He did it half-heartedly. And then when the one time, the Lord said, go kill all these people, everything. Man, woman, child, beast, everything. He didn't. And then he blamed, oh, well, the people spared them. The people did it. He didn't take full responsibility. And as king, it's his fault, okay? That's, that's thus the life of Saul. So in reading in 1 Samuel chapter 16, we read from verse 14 on to the close of the chapter. Now, this is after, you know, after uh, Saul disobeyed and whatnot. Check this out. Verse 14 in 1 Samuel 16, verses 14 on to verse 23. 
But the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 10. And repayeth them that hate him to their face, to destroy them. He will not be slack to him that hateth him. He will repay him to his face. See, King Saul did, did the opposite of what verse 11 says. Thou shalt therefore keep the commandments and the statutes and the judgments which I command thee this day to do them. And because King Saul didn't do what verse 11 said, verse 10, we're looking at. Let's read verse 14 again. But the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. Why? Because he didn't obey the commandments of the Lord. He didn't do what the Lord told him to do. Hence, when you think about it, when the Lord tells you to do something specific and you don't do it, are you loving the Lord? Or are you actually in a way showing hatred toward him? <gasps> yeah. Oh, 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 but you're 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 a really good person, right? Come on, let's get real, people. Come on, let's get real with one another. Okay? We're, you as the church of the living God, we, we are not going to be obedient all the time. It's impossible. Why? Because we're in the flesh. You know, our, our spirit and soul are housed in sinful flesh. Okay? It's a battle between spirit and flesh all the time. Okay? And sometimes, unfortunately, yeah, the flesh wins. Okay? Okay? But keep in mind, when we as the church of the living God are disobedient unto clearly what the Lord said, are we showing love unto the Lord, or are we showing hate? Wrap that around in your head a little bit. Well, Brad, I wouldn't call it that. Yeah, what well, do you want to call it? You want to give it a euphemism of some sort? That's Jesuit. No, let's be real with one another. Let's be real. Okay? Let's continue. And Saul's servants said unto him, Behold now, an evil spirit from God troubleth thee. Let our Lord now command thy servants, which are before thee, to seek out a man who is a cunning player on an harp, and it shall come to pass when the evil spirit from God is upon thee, that he shall play with his hand, and thou shalt be well. And Saul said unto his servants, Provide me now a man that can play well, and bring him to me. Then answered one of the servants, and said, Behold, I have seen a son of Jesse the Bethlehemite, that is cunning in playing, and a mighty valiant man, and a man of war, and prudent in matters, and a comely person, and the Lord is with him. Wherefore Saul sent messengers unto Jesse, and said, Send me David thy son, which is with the sheep. And Jesse took an ass laden with bread, and a bottle of wine, and a kid, and sent them by David his son unto Saul. And David came to Saul, and stood before him, and he loved him greatly, and he became his armor-bearer. And Saul sent to Jesse, saying, Let David, I pray thee, stand before me, for he hath found favor in my sight. And it came to pass, when the evil spirit from God was upon Saul, that David took an harp and played with his hand. So Saul was refreshed and was well, and the evil spirit departed from him. Now, in looking at verse 23, it's very interesting because you have Saul who is tormented with an evil spirit from God, meaning that God allowed this evil spirit to come and to torment Saul because Saul was disobedient. Saul hated the Lord. And then you have David, the son of Jesse, representing the Lord himself, okay? So you have the contrast here in verse 23. Someone who is tormented with an evil spirit of the world and someone who is of the church of the living God who possesses the scriptures. 
playing with his hand on the harp, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Hmm, very interesting, huh? But see, point is, because of Saul's disobedience, an evil spirit was sent upon him. Remember, there ain't no thing as coincidence, people. There ain't no th such thing as coincidence. Okay? Now, go back. Go back to Deuteronomy chapter 7. Now, let's pick up now in Deuteronomy chapter 7 from verses 20 onto the close of the chapter. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verses 20 onto the close of the chapter. Moreover, the Lord thy God will send the hornet among them until they that are left and hide themselves from thee be destroyed. Thou shalt not be affrighted of them, at them, excuse me. For the Lord thy God is among you, a mighty God and terrible. And the Lord thy God will put out those nations before thee by little and little, thou mayest not consume them at once, lest the beasts of the field increase upon thee. But the Lord thy God shall deliver them unto thee, and shall destroy them with a mighty destruction, until they be destroyed. And he shall deliver their kings into thine hand, and thou shalt destroy their name from under heaven. There shall no man be able to stand before thee until thou have destroyed them. Verses 25 and verse 26. The graven images of their gods, little g, devils, shall ye burn with fire. Thou shalt not desire the silver or gold that is on them, because they look so pretty, remember. Nor take it unto thee, lest thou be snared therein, for it is an abomination to the Lord thy God. Neither, right here, neither shalt thou bring an abomination into thine house, lest thou be a cursed thing like it. Lest thou be a cursed thing like it but thou shalt utterly detest it, and thou shalt utterly abhor it. Abhor means extreme hatred, for it is a cursed thing. So the scriptures does not talk specifically about a haunted house. But verse 26 definitely makes mention of a house that is cursed. Why? The graven images of their gods shall ye burn with fire. Thou shalt not desire the silver or gold that is on them, nor take it unto thee, lest thou be snared therein. For it is an abomination to the Lord thy God. Now, today in this dispensation, the time of the Gentiles, when you come to the Lord on his terms, broken, contrite, and in fear of the Lord, call upon the name of the Lord, and he save you, you are sealed with the Holy Ghost. And the Lord Jesus Christ, who is God our Father, the Lord is that spirit, okay? One God consisting of spirit, soul, and body. I'm going to keep saying that to you until you get it through your head, okay? So get used to it, okay? But when you have God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord is that spirit, dwelling within you, hence that is the circumcision made without hands. When you have God living within you, a devil cannot, I, there's, a devil cannot live wherein God dwells, okay? What am I getting at? I do not believe for one millisecond that someone who is genuinely saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, who has God our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Ghost, dwelling within them, I do not believe at all that that said person, who is himself or herself, a spirit, soul, and body, cannot be possessed. I, there's no way. There's no way. What fellowship hath light with darkness? What fellowship hath the temple of God, which ye are, with idols? 
you know, little idols like the Mary statue, idols like the church buildings, okay? Remember that in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, that's talking about fellowship, okay? But still, there's no way that someone who is genuinely saved can be possessed with the devil. I don't believe it. There's no way. There's no way. Oppressed. Oppressed. Afflicted. Obsessed. Yeah, that's different. A devil of someone who is truly saved, born again, converted to the church of the living God, there's no way that a devil can live within someone who is truly saved. I don't believe it for one second. Not one second. Not one second. Okay, but a devil can sure whisper into someone's ear and sure get into your head and mess with you. And that is usually predicated by what you are allowing in from the outside. Usually. Nine times out of ten. Is there, I would imagine there is an exception to that. I would imagine. I couldn't tell you what that would be. Because remember, nothing happens by coincidence. There is no such thing. Okay? Usually when there is devil oppression amongst those who are saved, it's always because of one thing. Neither shalt thou bring an abomination into thine house. Now, your four walls? But then again, have you brought something into your personal life? Huh? Are you setting wicked things before your eyes? Are you opening? Are there doors open in your life, in your house, that devils are getting in? Want a good, you want a really good example of that? The television. Music, TV, television, music, that kind of stuff. Stuff you look up on the internet. An object. Um, I've known of people that, that, that a cursed thing called a Ouija board. Um, if any of you of the Church of the Living God, you might be newly saved or something. For you youngins out there, uh, you living with your parents, and, you know, if your parents are lost... And there's a Ouija board there. Those, all the time, those Ouija boards are absolutely no good. <laughs> obviously, obviously. A brother of mine, of ours, of the Church of the Living God, had made mention, the same one who provided the, uh, the thumbnail that you will be seeing on this video, made mention of the one time that someone related to him uh, threw a Ouija board into a fire and the flames went like super, super sky high because of that Ouija board. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, Ouija boards are evil. Ouija boards are evil. I know a lot of people say that, you know, you can fake it with the circular or figure eight motion. Those things are evil. Those are tools of the devil, okay? Those are tools of devils. And if any of you, any of you, have those in your houses. Lost, you lost people. You don't know what you're messing with. You're messing with devils. Okay? If you have one of those in your house, you need to get rid of that thing. You need to go get your kerosene or your charcoal fluid and put that thing out there and <laughs> roast it. Okay? But, again, for those of the Church of the Living God, like I said, I don't buy for one second that someone who is genuinely saved, who has the Lord in them, who is sealed unto the day of redemption, there ain't no way that someone who is genuinely saved can be possessed by a devil. I don't buy that for a, a second. But oppressed by a devil. Yeah, that's possible, I believe. Because they're not out getting in. They're from the outside, screaming things in. And remember... Church of the living God. What is not God doing to you? And what is the devil not doing to you? Okay. 
Don't forget that. Now, let's, let's look a little bit more into this, okay? About bringing outside things of this world into your four walls or into your personal life. Jeremiah chapter 10. <laughs> yeah, Jeremiah chapter 10. Jeremiah chapter 10, verses 1 on to verse 5. Hear ye the word of the Lord. Hear ye the word which the Lord speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord. Learn not the way of the heathen. And be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. For the heathen are dismayed at them. For the customs of the people are vain. For one cutteth a tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of the workman with an axe, with the axe. Um, obviously, we know what this is speaking directly against. I'm not going to bring that up. Made my point on that. Um, we, if you've watched anything that uh, your servant does here, uh, you know where I stand on that. You know what I'm referring to. Leave it alone. Let's continue. They deck it with silver and with gold. They fasten it with nails and with hammers, that it move not. They are upright as the palm tree, but speak not. They must needs be born because they cannot go. Be not afraid of them, for they cannot do evil, neither also is it in them to do good. But most importantly, what we are to take away from this is, <laughs> verse 2, Thus saith the Lord, Learn not the way of the heathen, and you know what you do? You cross-reference this. I didn't even look in the uh, margin here. With Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. You ought to, by now, have these verses ingrained in your head as the church of the living God. Romans 12, verses 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice Holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Okay? So the question becomes then, if there are such things going on within your house, within your life, um, if, if you're of the Church of the Living God, you need to find out what has been brought in. It could be a person. It could be an object. It could be something with you, yourself, that you're doing that you are not aware of. You, you, you need to examine yourself. You need to examine yourself. And those of you who are lost, <laughs> you see, you lost people. You're, you're messing around with devils, okay? These ghost hunter people, that you, the, the videos that you can find here on YouTube, they're messing around with devils, okay? Devils! God does not operate in such ways. Find it for me. Devils. Devils do. Devils do. Okay. Now, go to Deuteronomy chapter 17. Deuteronomy chapter 17. We're going to look at something about, uh, we're, going to, we're going to stick with those who were called to be holy separate other than that. What happens when those who bring in these things that our Lord specifically has warned us not to bring in. Deuteronomy chapter 17, verses 14 on to verse 20. Deuteronomy chapter 17, verses 14 on to verse 20. This is talking about 
the rules of a king, what they're not supposed to do. And the king is the head of the people. And if the root is bad, that usually affects the fruit, doesn't it? See, that's what King Saul was trying to avoid when he blamed the people for what he allowed. It was his fault. Even though, even though he wanted to say it was them who did it, him as king was the one to be solely responsible for what they did. Okay, so Deuteronomy chapter 17, verses 14 on to verse 20. When thou art come unto the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, and shalt possess it, and shalt dwell therein, and shalt say, I will set a king over me, like as all the nations that are about me. And that's exactly what they did in 1 Samuel. Thou shalt in any wise set him king over thee, whom the Lord thy God shall choose. One from among thy brethren shalt thou set king over thee. Thou mayest not set a stranger over thee, which is not thy brother. And a form of judgment against Israel is when, obviously, they had others who were not of their own ruling over them. You as the Church of the Living God, uh, the instruction and in righteousness in this ought to be screaming unto you. Let's continue. But he, he shall not multiply horses to himself. And this is exactly what King Solomon did. And you read about this in 1 Kings chapter 10, uh, verse 14, specifically. Okay, we're not going to look at that. But Solomon, he went down to Egypt and let's, let's continue reading. But he shall not multiply horses to himself, nor cause the people to return to Egypt. To the end that he should not multiply horses, which is exactly what King Solomon did. For as much as the Lord has said unto you, ye shall henceforth return no more that way. With people whom I've had contact with, who are experiencing devil oppression, okay? And I'm not talking about doors slamming in the nights or apparitions, you know. Remember the Fatima thing, okay, with the Mary bleh, apparition things, okay, that's devils, okay. But those who are experiencing devilish oppression, usually, well, usually, with those I pers personally speak with uh, through emails and stuff, it's always that... They brought something in from the outside and I've allowed it into their lives. Something that the Lord is clearly a perfect example. It's when someone of the Church of the Living God who is genuinely saved starts going back to their vomits and looking at, say, pornography again. Or starting to watch Hollywood movies again. You've been free from the booze for years. Why not I drink a, why not I open up a can of beer? Well, it won't hurt. You start going around people whom used to be your so-called friends. Every time with people I've spake with, every time. It is always centered around those who are of the Church of the Living God who are experiencing devil oppression. It's because they go back. They uh, if I what is uh, what does Paul say? If I build up the things I have destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. If I rebuild it, you know, you make a bridge back to those of your lost life, not to witness onto them, but to bring in those back into the fold of your life. It always centers around something like that. It always centers around, for those whom I have speak with, it always centers around those who are truly saved, genuinely born again, converted of the Church of the Living God, messing around and bringing things from out there 
that God says, don't do it, they say, well, a little bit won't hurt. And you reap what you sow. And then when it comes to like ghosts and houses and where you live, what have you brought in? What have you allowed in? What are you doing? What are you doing that wasn't what once wasn't there? These are things you have to grapple, grapple with. These are things you have to wrestle with. And the only answer, the only answer is our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Okay? And we're going to look at a little later when, like, like I said, you see in some of these YouTube videos, these ghost hunter guys who will be like, mention the name of our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, and uh, I, I, I like it, too, that a lot of them seem to always be covered in tattoos, okay? <laughs> and I have foul mouths and talking to these devils, go to the light! And, oh, well, what do you think about Jesus Christ? It's like, you idiots. An idiot is someone who is void of logic and reason. Um, you have no idea what you're messing with. You truly do not. <laughs> and someone who is lost, in such a situation is going to call upon the name of the Lord whom Paul preacheth. We're going to look at that a little later, so don't worry, okay? Let's continue. Let's continue where uh, where we left off. Where did, <laughs> where did we leave off? Okay. Okay. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Verse 17 in Deuteronomy chapter 17. Neither shall he multiply wives to himself. We all know about Solomon. That his heart turn not away, neither shall he greatly multiply to himself silver and gold. Greatly multiply to himself silver and gold. And it shall be when he sitteth upon the throne of his kingdom that he shall write him a copy of, the, of this law in a book out of that which is before the priest's the Levites. See, rulers are supposed to be godly and to adhere to the scriptures. And it shall be with him, and he shall read therein all the days of his life, that he may learn to fear the Lord his God, to keep all the words of this law and these statutes to do them. Why? That his heart be not lifted up above his brethren, because you got to remember, the king himself is served from the field. The king, you know, like King Solomon, how did he come into the world? Butt naked and crying. How did you come into the world? Butt naked and crying. How are you going to leave this world? Butt naked and not breathing. <laughs> okay? Job, naked came I into this world, and naked shall I return hither. The Lord gave, the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Okay? Let's continue. That his heart be not lifted up uh, above his brethren, and that he turn not aside from the commandment to the right hand or to the left, to the end that he may prolong his days in his kingdom, he and his children in the midst of Israel. Now, we have to go and look at good old King Solomon. So let's go to 1 Kings chapter 11. 1 Kings, not 2 Kings, Brad. 1 Kings chapter 11. Now, in 1 Kings chapter 10, let's go ahead. I said we weren't, but let's go ahead and look at this. Uh, 1 Kings chapter 10, verse 14. I want us to uh, pay attention. Uh, Pay attention to this. Remember the Lord said that you will not greatly multiply. The Lord gave Solomon all kinds of riches. Yes, he did. But note this. 1 Kings chapter 10, verse 14. Get a lot of this. Now the weight of gold that came to Solomon in one year was 600 three score and six Talents of gold. Score is 20, 2, 4, 6. So 600, 3 score, 
and six talents of gold. And it is the number of a man, six, six, six. That's not to be missed. Very interesting. But in 1 Kings 10, verses 28 and 29. And Solomon had horses brought out of Egypt and linen yarn. The king's merchants received the linen yarn at a price. And a chariot came up and went out of Egypt for 600 shekels of silver and an horse for 150. And so for all the king's and so for all the kings of the Hittites and for the kings of Assyria, did they bring them out by their means? So Solomon already kind of blew it there. Okay. But multiply wives to himself. Now, see, we, we already looked at it in Deuteronomy 7. Okay. Not making marriages with people outside of what of their own. Why? Because their hearts would be turned away, okay? That cannot be denied. Let's look at good old King Solomon. First uh, Kings chapter 11, verses 1 on verse 8. But King Solomon loved many strange women. Strange, meaning not of his own kindred together with the daughter of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites, Ammonites, descended from Lot, Edomites, Zidonians, and Hittites, Edomites, Esau, of the nations concerning which the Lord said unto the children of Israel, Ye shall not go into them, neither shall they come in unto you, for surely they will turn away your heart after other gods. Solomon clave unto these in love. Now, again, the instruction in righteousness for us of the church of the living God. When you go against something that God has specifically said, don't do it, and you want to go and bring what's from out there, whatever it is, into your four walls, into your personal life, you're going to have problems. And to be, let's be, let's be real with each other. It could be something at first to you unbeknownst. You might have to do some real deep search and it's like, okay, what, what did I do? Did I do something? Um, what, what, did I allow something in? Did I bring something in? Did, uh, did I, what? These, these are things, if you are having devil oppression, and if in your house you got cups and saucers flying all across the room with nobody in the room but just you, and you're seeing this stuff, okay, that, that kind of stuff happens. Okay, brethren, we, we have to, brethren, brethren, people, okay? I know a lot of you, I do, I know a lot of you want to dismiss the fact that they're, you know, we, you could be somewhere and like cups and saucers will start flying around without anything. Things will move on their own. Doors will slam all of a sudden with no wind. I'll speak on more on that uh, a little bit. And also you'll be hearing banging in a building where there's no one there but you and just a couple people. And you stomp on the floor and then it all stops. More on that a little later too. Okay. Um, these kind of things actually do happen, okay? Now, it could be, for example, uh, you could be into some place where you ought not to be, where there is something there where you ought not to be. That can happen, okay? Absolutely. But from the perspective of those of us who are of, of the Church of the Living God or for you lost people, if you have something that's going on in your house, that has happened all of a sudden or something like that, you need to consider what you have brought in. Okay? You need to consider what you have brought in. Now let's continue here. Verse 3. And he had 700 wives, princesses, and 300 concubines, and his wives turned away his heart. 
For it came to pass, when Solomon was old, old, that his wives turned away his heart after other gods, after devils. Solomon. Solomon. His wives turned his heart to other gods, i.e., excuse me, devils. And his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God, as was the heart of David his father. Check this out. For Solomon went after Ashtaroth, the goddess of the Zidonians, and after Milcom, the abomination of the Ammonites. And Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord, and went not fully after the Lord, as did David his father. Then did Solomon build an high place for Chemosh, the abomination of Moab, in the hill that is before Jerusalem, and for Molech, the abomination of the children of Ammon. And likewise did he for all his strange wives, which burnt incense and sacrificed unto their gods. Devils. Devils. Solomon allowed this. Solomon brought this in. Okay. Now, obviously, we don't read anything about Solomon being cursed by evil spirits or anything like that. But the point is, King Solomon, through going outside of what God had said, had brought a curse upon him. Because these women turned away his heart and they were worshiping devils. And the instruction for us, again, you really got to be careful with what you're allowing into your house, into your life. Sister, brother, you really got to be careful with that. Really got to be careful. <laughs> very, very careful. Now, go to Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4. The ultimate answer to any devil oppression in your life, any contact with devil spirits, the only answer is Jesus Christ. <laughs> okay? That is the only answer. Matthew chapter 4, which is doctrinally still in the Old Testament, because the testator had not died, buried, and rose again, third day according to the scriptures. Matthew chapter 4, verses 23 under verse 25. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. And his fame went throughout all Syria, and they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with diverse diseases and torments. And those which were possessed with devils, and those which were lunatic, and those that had the palsy, and he healed them. And there followed him great multitudes of people from Galilee, and from Decapolis, and from Jerusalem, and from Judea, and from beyond Jordan. And when you see our Lord Jesus Christ casting devils out of people, it wasn't a drawn out month long process. It was like that, okay? It didn't take months and months like the Jesuit written uh, thing of The Exorcist, okay? The, you know, the Hollywood movie, The Exorcist, the story that that's based off of uh, was based off of something written by a Jesuit. That's something that apparently actually happened, okay? <laughs> Jesuit. Yeah, and they said that it took months for it to go away. Uh, when the Lord Jesus Christ is involved, it happens quickly. It happens quickly. We're gonna we're gonna talk a little about that when we get to this. Okay, so okay, so but we see Jesus, God the Father, healing all manners of diseases. And those who were possessed with devils and were lunatic, and he healed them. Hmm. Now go to Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5. 
Mark chapter 5. We're going to be reading verses 1 on to verse 20. Mark chapter 5. And they came over onto the other side of the sea, into the country of the Gadarenes. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit, unclean spirit, who had his dwelling among the tombs. All they that hate me love death, dwelling among death. Hmm. And no man could bind him, no, not with chains. Because that, he had, because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces. Neither could any man tame him. A sign that someone is possessed with the devil. My mother, who died and is in hell, who is pretty much as short as my wife, who weighed under 100 pounds at her death, when the devils would manifest themselves in her, she would have fits of incredible strength for a little, frail, anemic, basically, woman. Okay? And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. Again, my mother, who was possessed with devils, um, she would, she, my mother, I loved my mother very much. I loved her very much. Uh, towards her death, she weighed under a hundred pounds. She is as short as my wife, about five, four, five, three, something in there. Okay. And when these devils would manifest themselves, um, she would have a vocal change, that kind of thing. Okay. And also she would, uh, have incredible bouts of strength. She would do things and forget about them. But what, this right here, my mother had a horrible time sleeping. She could not sleep. She was up for days at a time and would only sleep for hours, like an hour at a time or something like that. She would often just sit there and like, woo -hoo, woo -hoo, and weep and cry. Signs of devil possession. Yeah. Yeah. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him. A devil-possessed man worshipping Jesus. Yeah. And cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of the Most High God? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. For he said unto him, Come out to the man, thou unclean spirit. And he asked him, What is thy name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. I never, I never, of course, when, when I was around my mother, I never asked her, you know, never asked her that. But uh, my mother... I'm, I, I know for certain that she had many devils in her. Beg your pardon. Verse 10. Did, I, did we resume? Yeah. And he besought him much that he would not send them away out of the country. Now there were now there was there nigh unto the mountains a great herd of swine feed, feeding. And all the devils besought him, saying, Send us into the swine, that we may enter into them. And forthwith Jesus gave them leave. And the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine. And the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea. There were about two thousand, and were choked in the sea. And they that fed the swine fled and told it in the city and in the country. And they went out to see what, was, what it was that was done. And they come to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil. Note the singular there, devil. 
up here, verse 9. He, and he asked him, What is thy name? And he answered, My name is Legion, for we are many. But here it says, And they come to Jesus, and see him that was possessed with the devil. Hmm. And had the legion sitting and clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. And they and they that saw it told them how it befell to him that was possessed with the devil. Singular again. Hmm. And it says over here in verse 2, an unclean spirit. Okay? And over here in verse 9, my name is Legion, for we are many. But yet it's attributed as one devil. Hmm. And also concerning the swine, verse 17. And they began to pray him to depart out of their coasts. And when he was come into the ship, he that had been possessed with the devil prayed him that he might be with him. Howbeit Jesus suffered him not, but saith unto him, Go home to thy friends and tell them how great things the Lord hath had the Lord hath done for thee, and hath had compassion on thee. And he departed and began to publish in Decapolis how great things Jesus had done for him. And all men did marvel. So see, Jesus cast out the devil, legion, which were many, but one devil. Cast them out. And this man, our Lord said, go testify what I've done for you. How he freed him from devil possession. Instant. Not months. Okay? Not months. And this guy, because of that, because he was set free, he wanted to go with Jesus. But Jesus like, no, no, you, you go tell people. You go tell people. Get a note of that. Take a very good note of that. Now go to Mark chapter 9 while we are here. Mark chapter 9. We will be reading verses 14 on to verse 29. In Mark chapter 9. Jesus is your answer. And those of you of the church of the living God, you know this. If you are saved, born again, converted, the Lord lives within you. You need to do some inventory. Okay, if you are having devil oppression, if there are weird things going on in your house, if there are weird things going on in your life and you are actually saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, you need to stop what you're doing, get the scriptures and examine yourself and examine your life and examine things about you. Okay, are you allowing portals, doors for these devils to come into your life? Because that's what it is. It's devils. And you lost people. Mess. You don't want to talk to devils. Okay? You don't want to have anything to do with these devils. Okay? You really don't. If you got things going on and you're lost in your house, in your life, but I wonder why. Jesus Christ is your answer. He is the only one who can fix these things for you. If he will. But see, remember, he ain't going to force you. And neither is the devil. Mark chapter 9, verses 14 on to verse 29. And when he came to his disciples, he saw a great multitude about them, and the scribes questioning with them. And straightway all the people, when they beheld him, were greatly amazed, and running to him, saluted him. And he asked the scribes, What question you with them? And one of the multitude answered and said, Master, I have brought unto thee my son, which hath a dumb spirit. Dumb, not being able to speak. And wheresoever he taketh him, he teareth him, and he foameth, and gnasheth with his teeth. And pineth away. And I spake to thy disciples that they should cast him out, and they could not. Note thee gnasheth with his teeth, and pineth away. Another uh, sign of devil possession. Okay? 
the pineth away. Again, I saw in my mother, who she went down to Florida and something happened to her down in Florida where something happened. And when she came back, she was the woman until her death, possessed with devils. And she pined away. She pined away. She had bursts, uh, bursts of extreme strength for someone her size. Her voice would go from normal to guttural and stuff like that. Crying, she would have unknown wounds from tossing and turning and stuff like that. And she pined away. Pined away. Okay. Verse 19, he answereth him and saith, O oh, faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. And they brought him unto him. And when he saw him, straightway the spirit tear him, and he fell on the ground and wallowed foaming. Have you ever seen anyone have an, an actual epileptic? The seizure in front of you and that foaming of their mouth it's quite horrifying it's quite horrifying if you've never seen it and i hope you don't it's quite horrifying and he asked his father how long is it ago since this came on to him and he said of a child train up a child in the way he shall go and when he is old he will not depart from it how many of you lost people are instead of having closeness with your children, bringing them up in the nurture and admonition of the scriptures, okay? How many of you are like taking an electronic thing and it's like, here, occupy yourself with that for a while? Uh, how many of them are of you are setting your children in front of the television and say, here, occupy yourself, opening their minds up to devil possession and oppression, huh? Huh? How many of you are doing that for your children? Giving them the little toy figures, right? That, uh, you know, little superhero toy figures, right? Huh? Idols? Think about it, people. With your children that you idolize. That you want to live vicariously through yourselves. What are you setting? What are you subjecting your children onto, people? Okay? By... Oh, I'm just going to put them in front of a television and let them go. Yeah, you're opening their minds up to devils. Oh, here, give them a video game, right? Come on, people. Come on. And he asked his father, how long is it ago since this came on to him? And he said of a child. Of a child. Again. Bring up a child in the way he should go, and he will not depart from it. And oftentimes it hath cast him into the fire, and into the waters to destroy him. But if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us, and help us. Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. And straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, help thou mine unbelief. When Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the foul spirit, saying unto him, Thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him, and enter no more into him. Enough said. And the spirit cried, and rent him sore, and came out of him, and he was as one dead, insomuch that many said, he is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand, and lifted him up, and he arose. So, when the Lord cast out a devil or a spirit devil it's like that isn't it not months at a time like you will hear Catholics these exorcists in Catholicism talk about yeah and when he was come into the house 
His disciples asked him privately, why could not we cast him out? Now, if you have a Bible and not the scriptures, this might not be in there for you. And he saith unto them, this kind can come forth, this kind can come forth by nothing, but by prayer and fasting. This kind can come forth by nothing, but by prayer and fasting. Prayer and fasting. Abstaining, you know, from putting food in you. Fasting from, uh, I don't know, whatever it is you're doing normally. You know, more, more often than not, fasting is always equated with food. Yes, but fast from other things. You know, <laughs> you want you want a good way not to fall for the uh, uh, poison crown uh, psychological operation. Don't watch television. <laughs> okay. This kind can come forth by nothing, but by prayer and fasting. Prayer and fasting. Of the Church of the Living God, you're having problems such as these. Prayer and fasting, seeking the Lord. Serious. What, you never fasted before? Um, you got this kind of stuff going on in your life. You might want to consider it. Especially in the times that we are living right now in there. Okay? Now, go to Acts. Now, Acts chapter 16. Acts is a transitional book. Going from the old unto the new, okay? It's a book of transition, all right? But yet it is this current dispensation. Acts chapter 16. Acts chapter 16. Acts chapter 16, we want verses 16 on to verse 18. I myself personally, uh, a while ago, while the weather was warm, um, I encountered a homeless man who I used to witness, who I prayed for before and witness on to and tried to help him out. Um, his name is Michael, uh, a tall man who, is, who received the steal of the Jesuit poniard. Uh, he's a dead man, unfortunately. He's, I don't know if he's dead now, but he was close to it. But the last I saw him, um, this devil-possessed woman in town here, um, her name is Vicky something, okay? Devil possessed, absolutely devil possessed. Um, while I had a chance to witness onto this homeless man, Michael, this devil possessed woman, Vicky, was doing exactly what we're seeing. I, I encountered this. I did not do what Paul did because I, I just couldn't, I just went away and she followed me. But um, I went into a store and she finally broke off. But I have experienced this myself personally. And it came to pass as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination met us, which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. Soothsaying, okay? A spirit of divination. It's a devil. Okay, it says spirit, yes, but that's not of God. Okay, that's a devil. The same followed Paul and us and cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, which shew unto us the way of salvation. Was that true? Yes, it was. But see, this was a form of antagonism by this spirit of divination which was a devil, okay? As happened to me, while well, I'm witnessing to this dying man, basically, this homeless guy, this Vicky lady over here, no, it was over on my right shoulder, she's doing, oh, Lord Jesus Christ, blah, 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 at the top of her lungs, and she's possessed with the devil. I've experienced this personally, okay? And this did she many days, but Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the spirit. Now, note what Paul says. 
Note what Paul says, and note what Paul does not say. Okay, pay attention. Look, don't look at me. Pay attention to this verse. I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out that out the same hour. Stop. I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. Did Paul in this incident, did Paul say, I rebuke thee in the... No, he did not. What did he say? Don't look at me. Look at the verse. Okay? Look at the scripture. I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out the same hour. What did Paul say? Come out of her. What did he not say? I rebuke you. Don't, don't miss that. Don't miss that. Okay? Now, Acts chapter 19. Acts chapter 19. We want verses 14 on to verse 20. Now, like I told you earlier, you look on YouTube at these guys who are not of the Church of the Living God, go into these places and try to call upon the name of the Lord to do what only those of the Church of the Living God you know, who have God within them are the ones to be doing anything of such nature, okay? But see, then again, we as the Church of the Living God, we're not like the sons of Sceva here, okay? We're not ro roving or roaming exorcists, okay? See, if you're not saved, you trying to call upon the name of the Lord to do something in your life when it comes to devils, ha, 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 good luck. Acts chapter 19, verses 14 on to verse 20. And there were seven sons of one Sceva, a Jew, and chief of the priests, which did so. And the Eve... Ah, verse 13, beg your pardon. Verse 13 on to verse 20. I beg your pardon. <laughs> beg your pardon. Then certain of the vagabond Jews, beg your pardon, exorcists, plural, there's your appearance of exorcists in the scripture, took upon them to, took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits the name of the Lord Jesus. Okay, these guys were not saved and they took it upon themselves uh, to call uh, over the evil spirits in the name of the Lord Jesus, saying, we adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preacheth. See, there's no personal connection there. They weren't saved of the church of the living God, number one. And number two, there was no personal connection. Where Paul, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. He did not say, I rebuke you. Okay? He said, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ. Paul, saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, had God living within him. But you get it, okay? These guys, not saved, no personal connection because of whom Paul preacheth. And there were seven sons of one Sceva, a Jew, and chief of the priests, which did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are ye? Who are ye? See, those, those of you ghost hunter guys out there, you lost people who think it's cute to play around with devils 
and think, oh, when you get into a problem, I'll just call on the name of Jesus Christ when Paul preached it. Verse 16. And the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them and overcame them and prevailed against them so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. Do you see that? You as lost people, you messing around with devils, really bad. You lost people messing around with devils, trying to take the name of our God upon these devils when you are not saved, these devils that you are playing with are going to do exactly what happened to these guys. And have. Very dangerous. <laughs> Very dangerous. And those of us in the church of the living God. Verse 17. And this was known to all the Jews and Greeks also dwelling at Ephesus. And fear fell on them all. And the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. You might be saying, how so? Well, you had these guys who were not of the church of the living God trying to call upon on evil spirits, put upon them the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. They had no power because they were not saved. They didn't belong unto the Lord. So because they were not belonging unto the Lord, the name of the Lord was magnified against those who were not. See, that's how his name was magnified. Because those who were not were made fools of because they were not of the church of the living God, see. Verse 18. And many that believed, now check this out, came and confessed and shewed their deeds. Okay, church of the living God. Okay, this the first part of this addresses those who are messing around where they aren't, uh, ought not to be messing around. And then on top of that, try to call the name, uh, call upon these devils the name of our God, our Lord Jesus Christ, our Father, and you're not saved. You're asking for a whole world of hurt. But see, those who are of the church of the living God, they see that, and they're, uh, those who believed, okay, uh, they're like, oh, wow. So what do they do? And many that believed came and confess, Lord, I've been messing around where I shouldn't have been messing. I've allowed this person into my life. I brought this into my home. It's my fault. See, personal. See, in verse 13, there was no personal there. It's personal. And shewed their deeds. Look, Lord, I, look, Lord, I, I, I watched, uh, I've been watching a movie. I, I, I went and listened to something. I, I had this guy come to my house. Um, I, I, I invited these people into my house. Okay, I, I didn't know I had this, this statue or I had this thing in there. I, I didn't know. Here, Lord, I'm doing it. Okay, then what? Many of them also which use curious arts brought their books together. And remember what we looked at in Deuteronomy? Crossing dispensational lines. What you ought to do with occult stuff. Many of them also which used curious arts brought their books together and burned them before all men. And you might be saying, well, I have all this stuff. I don't want to burn it. That's worth a lot of money. Oh, yeah? And they counted the price of them and found it to be 50,000 pieces of silver. <laughs> what's, what's more valuable, valuable to you? Our Lord Jesus Christ and the peace that he will give you in salvation and knowing that you have cleansed your house of all filth or the 20 pieces of silver. Which one weighs up in light of eternity, dear friend? So mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. Now, I'm going, to take a, I'm going to take a quick moment here. Okay, we still got more scripture to read, but I want to get to this. The Fools. This is part four of Alberto Rivera's testimony. 
Look at, look at this creepy cover. Okay? I'm going to read a little about this. Now, these poor Catholics, when they have devil possession or stuff like that, they call these exorcists and stuff like that. You've all heard, most of you have heard of the Hollywood movie called The Exorcist, right? We're going to read here uh, a little bit in Alberto Rivera's testimony about how this works with the satanic Roman Catholic Church and these goings on. Very interesting. Now, we're going to read a little bit. I'm going to read this to you. So this I'm going to read to you. I'm going to show you page by page, okay, as we get there. Okay, let me see. I want to get this so you can... Um, Go ahead, pause that, take a screenshot, zoom in and read it. Okay? All right. The Force. This is a prophetical study to reveal the occult side of the whore of Revelation, Babylon the Great, Roman Catholicism. The habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit and the cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Revelation 18, verse 2. My story begins in a small village nestled high in the mountains of one of the Canary Islands southwest of Spain. This once happy village had become strangely quiet at night. People spoke in whispers when the sun went down. No longer did the people go out in the night hours, and no more songs were sung in the evenings. Fear gripped the hearts of the villagers. In the afternoons, the shops started closing early. Come back tomorrow. You'd better hurry home. It's almost dark. An evil thing had come to their village. Even the animals were frightened. Strange, unearthly noises were heard coming from the home of a widow, Miss Carmen Montez, a very devout daughter of Roman Catholicism. Cameron's nights were turning into nightmares. In low voices, the villagers asked each other if the dead really walked those lonely streets. Oh no! Carmen lit her candles and began praying to the Virgin Mary that tonight this horrible thing would not come back. But her heart started pounding, and perspiration broke out on her face as she turned around. A chill went up her spine, for she could hear the front door slowly opening, the same door she had so carefully bolted shut at sundown. The thing was back. Now... I'm going to read these pages here. Get my face out of the way. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Pause that. Take a screenshot. Zoom in and read it. Okay. Let's go back a few years to see how this nightmare began. Remember how we read in the scriptures? How long has this been coming upon you? Uh, upon him since a child, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Remember? Let's go a few years back to see how this nightmare began. Carmen Montez had a small 13-year-old daughter suffering from uncontrollable epileptic seizures. Again, if you've never seen epilepsy, uh, an epileptic seizure happen in somebody, it's very terrifying. Very terrible. You hear things about people swallowing their own tongues? It's horrifying. The doctors told Carmen that there was no cure for a little Margarita. Margarita. Carmen took her child to a shrine of the Virgin Mary and made a vow. If the Holy Virgin would heal her child, then Carmen would see to it that little Margarita would become a nun in the Carmelite order. As she prayed to the statue of the Blessed Virgin, Virgin, a strange force came upon Margarita. The seizures completely stopped. The doctors were amazed. Little Margarita was cured. It was a miracle. And Carmen gave the glory to the 
Virgin Mary for healing her little girl. To the Virgin Mary, not to the Lord Jesus Christ. There's only one mediator among men, people. The man, Christ Jesus, not Mary. Okay? Three years passed, and the time came for Carmen to keep her promise to the Virgin Mary. Holy Mother, I hear chains dragging across the floor. Carmen visited the parish priest and asked for help. Oh, Father, it was horrible. Oh, beg your pardon. We heard screams and cries in the dark. We believe it is the cries of your suffering relatives in purgatory. <laughs> Typical Catholic scum here. They are demanding more masses to be said and more candles to be lit to ease their pain. But Father, we are very poor. Don't they understand? They only understand the agony of their torments. You must help them. Then it will stop. I will try, Father. Yeah, give more money to get uh, to ease the suffering of purgatory. The Jesuitical money-making doctrine of purgatory. <coughs> Vicious scoundrels. And that's who you worship. More masses were said. But it didn't stop. It got worse every night. The family was terrified, except Margarita, who would claim who would calmly sit in her room and say the rosary. Margarita was studying to become a Carmel, Carmelite novice. The day Carmen put the nude brown dress of a Carmelite novice on Margarita to see if it fit properly. The force hit with a fury. It was like a raging windstorm, ripping pictures off the wall. And here, take a look at that. That's what is illustrated. Can you see that? But in Margarita's room, all was calm. As she sat there, saying the rosary, Help me! Blessed be the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. The parish priest was under pressure. The Protestants in the village knew about Carmen Montez, Montez's problem. The priest desperately wanted a miracle to show the power of his church. Wow, get a load of that. Remember this. The priest desperately wanted a miracle to show the power of his church. Mystery Babylon the Great. Satan's church, Roman Catholicism. And to make the Protestants look weak and powerless. Why could we not cast him out? This kind cometh out, cometh forth not, but nothing but by prayer and fasting. He called our diocese for backup. I promised to come and appeal to the souls of the dead from purgatory to leave her house. I prayed for the exorcism by consecrating the host, the little wafer cookie, by saying the proper mass for this occasion. Note the host is a little round wafer that, according to the Roman Catholic teaching, magically turns into the Lord Jesus Christ when the mass is, when the mass is said. Yeah, this is your God, you disgusting Catholic, the wafer cookie. Yeah, that's your God. Yeah. On the day of the exorcism, the fury of hell broke loose in the home of Carmen Montez. The force was getting stronger and stronger. And see here, go ahead and take a look at that. I can't stand it. Help us. It was at that moment the local priest came to their front door. He had been instructed to wait for me because I was a Jesuit priest. He was to assist me in the exorcism, but because everybody was begging him to help, he had gone ahead without me. The priest tried to open the door. It was stuck. When he let go of the handle, the door blasted open and... 
Now here, I'm going to show you this. Okay. Get this in there for you. Okay, is that all of it? Yeah? Okay. Pause that. Take a screenshot. Zoom in. We're starting here. Ugh! Mother of God! The force sucked him through the doorway into the house. The door slammed shut. And those outside heard the screams of their priest. When I arrived at the village, instead of finding the priest, I was met by the Saracen, the priest's helper. Where's the father? He went ahead and is waiting for us, Father Rivera. I don't like this. He should have waited here. Ignatius de Leola, while establishing his Jesuit order, communed with the spirit world using his spiritual exercises. Yeah, the spiritual exercises of Ignatius de Loyola. Someone who goes through that, you're going to be possessed with devils. I wonder if those guys from the behavioral panel have read that book. I'm sure they have. I'm sure they're all partakers of it. I was asked to help the local priest because as a Jesuit, I was well trained in the study of exorcism and the spirit realm. Yeah, because the Jesuits are basically devils themselves. The, pro the procession started from the church to the home of Carmen Montez when the people saw that their way for God being carried in the monstrance, that's that sun, bale, sun thing, okay? All the traffic stopped in reverence. They knew that either someone had died or it was an exorcism. And there's what... See that thing in the middle there? That's a monstrance. That's what they put your little wafer god in. The people got out of their cars and knelt, making the sign of the cross, which I'm not going to do. That's a curse sign uh, upon yourself. Because they believed that Jesus Christ himself was passing in front of them in the form of a little wafer. They were terrified of offending their wafer god, the priest, or their church. Beg your pardon, brethren. Beg your pardon. I forgot to turn the, uh, the ringer off. Okay. Where is the priest? He's inside, Father. Yeah! God, help us, Holy Mother. Quick. Uh, give me holy water. Quick. We're going inside. I'm afraid, Father. I don't care. You follow me. Father Rivera, look. The door is opening. Eek! It's the Father! Holy Mother of God! He's covered in blood. He's covered with blood. Is he dead? Now? And here's where we finish this up. Okay. Pause that. Screenshot it. Zoom it. And do what you got to do. Okay. He's dead. He's been cut to shreds like someone used a razor on him. You can't go in. I must. You'll be killed. An invisible force grabbed me in the doorway and pulled me into the house. Look, it got him. Oh my God, he's going to die too. The people were terrified. Now, check that out. And I, I truly believe what uh, Alberto Rivera said. I believe he is up there in heaven waiting for us. Check that out. I was spun like a top to the ceiling. Something cut my vestments to shreds in three-inch horizontal strips. You'll see some of these videos where people get scratches. Okay, three scratches usually on their arms, on their backs, on their legs and stuff like that. The scene inside was a nightmare. The daughters were off the floor, floating in the air at great speed, vomiting a green substance. 
But even in its full fury, the force never went near Margarita. I heard both screams and laughter. A raging wind was screeching and blowing all the furniture around the room. Chairs were exploding. I dropped to the floor. It was covered with foam and green slime. I tried to bless the house with holy water. Margarita's aunt suddenly screamed, Father, you have no crucifix. She struggled across the floor and grabbed a pair of scissors, formed a, cru a cross with them. The force immediately moved into another room. At that time, all those assisting me came through the front door. I grabbed the crucifix and started my Latin prayers. As soon as I started praying, the girls dropped to the floor. The ear-splitting noise of screams and laughter continued. Ugh. I then took the host, the way for God, and gave the first one to Margarita because she was the center of all this activity. Once all of them had taken the host, the voices slowly disappeared. The house was a shambles. At long last, the force was gone. Were they really souls of the dead? No. They were demons, devils. Did the host and the crucifix really drive away the force? No. It was all a devilishly clever scheme by Satan to make the people rely more and more on their priest for protection and to and it cost them their souls. Here, right here. Read that. Read that. So, wait a minute. These Catholic priests who go to deal with these problems, it's all a big show? It's what Alberto Rivera says. And Alberto Rivera's track record on bringing things to light of the Jesuit order is dead on. I'm going to believe him. I want to take his word. And when you look at the exorcist, you know, the things surrounding that, and these people who are claimed to be in deliverance miser uh, miseries, yeah, ministries, who all seem to wear dog collars, and, uh, you know, that turban hellguard guy or Sundergard guy with the uh, baptism in water and blah, 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 and all that nonsense, it's all a show. It's all a show by Satan to make people depend on their priests, on Roman Catholicism. Yeah, yeah, and that's something, huh? And if Satan cast out Satan, isn't his kingdom divided? But when someone who is stronger than Satan, i.e. God our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, Isn't that something? See, you, you lost people who are messing around with these devils. Uh, Roman Catholicism is Satan's church. You don't go to Satan to cast out Satan. You yourself need to get saved. Okay? Now, get your authorized version of the scripture. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Now, with what we just looked at, in uh, uh, from the testimony of Brother Alberto Rivera, who is waiting for us in heaven. I believe that. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 1 on to verse 4. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, we who are of the church of the living God, as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, such as the teachings of the Roman Catholic Church. Not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, like the Roman Catholic Church, but by manifestation of truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. 
living your life in accordance with the scriptures. Not allowing junk from out there into your life, into your home, making you a cursed thing like it. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. In whom the God of this world, little g, hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. Blinded. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine onto them. Light. The God of this world. Who is the God of this world? Satan. He has blinded the eyes of those who see not. Those who don't want to see. Okay? Hmm. Interesting. Now, first, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Verses 3 under verse 6. We as the church of the living God. He, you know, he, uh, uh, Brother Alberto was talking about, you know, they bring the wafer cookie and crucifixes and holy water. And this, come, this kind cometh uh, not forth but by prayer and fasting. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 and verse 6. For though we walk in the flesh... We do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, carnal, fleshly, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. What are these strongholds? Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringeth into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God. Hold your place here very quickly. Isaiah chapter 14. Every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God. Isaiah chapter 14, verses 12 on to verse 15. Church of the living God, you ought to have this verbatim when it comes with dealing with our enemy. Isaiah 14, verses 12 on to verse 15. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? Who is Lucifer? Satan, the devil, that old serpent, the dragon, Satan, okay? How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? Not morning star. Morning star is a title for our Lord Jesus Christ. Son of the morning. The Bibles say morning star. They're saying that Jesus, this is Jesus. That's blasphemy. That's why you need the scriptures. Okay? How art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Yet, thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the sides of the pit. Going back to 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God. Little G God of this world, Satan. And bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience, note that, of Christ. And having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Brother, sister, church of the living God, if you are having devilish, devil oppression in your life, in your house, you need to take some inventory, pray and fast, and what, what have I brought in 
that ought not to be there? What have I allowed that ought not to be there that because I have allowed it, I am reaping what I have sown? Okay? Whatever it is. Okay? Using something that God gave naturally in, in, a, in the wrong way? Yeah, that's that one's for you. Yeah, yeah. Using something that God provided naturally in a way that you're not supposed to. Hmm? Bringing in certain people into your life that you're not supposed to have in your life? Huh? Drinking? Smoking? Taking prescription drugs? Whatever it may be. Television, video games, movies, music, Buddha statues, dream catchers, whatever. You need to take inventory. Because note, note, verse 5 and 6, casting down, our, our weapons are not carnal, fleshly. This is the sword of the Spirit. D don't worry. We're going to read that. Don't worry. Okay? But this is the sword of the Spirit. Okay? Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ and having a readiness to revenge all disobedience... When your obedience is fulfilled. When your obedience is fulfilled. When you're of the church of the living God and you allow lost people into your life, if you're of the church of the living God and you're allowing things of the world into your life, into your home, and you, you lost people, you're not saved. You, you've got no hope. <laughs> you're, you're, here's your hope. Go to the Catholics. Go to the Catholics. Yeah, the Jesuits with their dog collars on. Yeah, go to them. Go to Satan to cast out Satan. Yeah. And as we saw the testimony of Alberto Rivera, uh, Satan might play along, you know, to make you dependent on him. Uh, under the instruments of a foolish shepherd. Okay. Now, Go to Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. Verses 1 out of verse 3. Very familiar verses. But uh, imperative. Okay. And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. Who has been quickened? You read in Ephesians chapter 1. That when we come to the Lord on his terms, broken, contrite, and fear the Lord, call upon his name, we get sealed until the day of redemption. Okay, that's verses 13 and 14. You read that on your own time. It's right across the page. But, and you, those who are saved, hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. You're not saved. You're dead in trespasses and sins. Where in time past, ye walked according to the course of this world, like those who are lost, okay? According to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. What is that spirit? Remember, God is a spirit. A, that very important letter, A. God is a spirit. The Bibles take out the A. God is spirit. Giving you confusion so you can't discern which is which. When you go to these care Catholic, Pentecatholic nut jobs talking in there, blah, 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 blah. Oh, it's the Lord. It's the Holy Ghost. God is spirit. No, God is a spirit. See, through the scriptures giving you the ability, the Lord through you giving you the scriptures to discern which is which. But see, you take out that letter A, how are you going to know? Your feelings, right? Yeah, because if you're using a Bible, you don't have a weapon, okay? You have kindling, okay? But see, you're not saved. You're dead in trespasses and sin. You're children of disobedience. Because if you've heard the gospel, the true gospel, and you reject it, you're children of disobedience. Verse 3. Among whom also we all had our conversation in time, in times past, 
in the lusts of our flesh. Fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. And we're by nature the children of wrath, even as others. So twice, children of disobedience and children of wrath. Those of you who are not saved. And you're not saved and you're going to be like the sons of Sceva and going to try to call on the name of Jesus whom Paul preacheth. To <laughs> Good luck. It's not going to end well for you. You need to get saved. It's not difficult, you know. What's difficult is you've got to be broken of yourself. That's the hard part. Because you're not good. There'll be links in the description that you and I can talk together about that, okay? But now, Ephesians chapter 6. Verses 11. Under verse 20. For those who are of the church of the living God. See, this is when you, the Lord saves you, when you come to him, onto him, his terms, broken of your self-righteousness, contrite, godly sorrow. It's your fault. You blame no one but you. It's your fault that he went to the cross. And in fear of the Lord, because he can send you to hell rightfully, call upon his name and ask him to forgive you. And may he save you. And if he save you, he comes into you and seals you until the day of redemption. Once saved, always saved. And we are waiting for the redemption of the purchased possession, the catching away of the church of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble, inaccurately referred to the pre-tribulation rapture. Guess what? Guess what? Guess what? Rapture is not in the scriptures. Why are you still using it? Anyway. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 11 on to verse 20. That, you're lost. This doesn't apply to you. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. And if you're letting outside influence in, Are you putting on the whole armor of God? Or are you taking a piece off here and there so you can allow things of the world in? For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Um... By the way, it's Roman Catholicism, Satan's church, that is being allowed for judgment to rule this world. It's the Catholics that are in control of everything, not the Jews. Okay? Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, not just a piece here, a piece there. The whole sandwich. That ye may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. See, if you're of the church of the living God and you're allowing outside influence into your home, into your life, opening doors for devils, you're not wearing the whole armor of God. You're not. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt with truth. Your loins girt with truth. What is truth? Jesus Christ, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. And having on the breastplate of righteousness, which protects your heart, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, being instant in season, out of season. Your feet shod. Ministers of reconciliation, having the word of reconciliation, ambassadors for Jesus Christ. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, 
and take the helmet of salvation, knowing that you are saved, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Right here, boy, the authorized version of the Scripture. Okay, When you have a Bible, you do not have a sword. You have a foam swimming sword thing. Okay? For the word of God, very quickly, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. Okay? If you can't, call, if you can't quote it verbatim, at least remember the address. Okay? If you can't quote it verbatim, at least remember the address. If Hebrews chapter 4, Verse 12, okay? For the word of, <clears throat> excuse me. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow. Joints and marrow are what? Part of the body. Soul, spirit, joints, marrow. A person is a spirit, soul, and body. God is, has a spirit, soul, and body. One God, spirit, soul, and body. Not one God consisting of three persons. Blah, that's insanity, okay? And is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Back to Ephesians chapter 6. Let's read verse 17 again. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication, in the spirit and watching there unto with all perseverance and supplications for all saints. Supplication for all saints. And for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. So, as the church of living, like I said, you lost people, this does not apply to you, okay? We are to be clad in the armor of God. Not a piece here, not a piece there, but the whole thing. How are we doing at that? Because you got to remember, brethren, and you lost people. As we got testimony from Alberto Rivera that... Satan and all that devil stuff that was going on in that house, in that testimony. Um, he brought out the little way for God, uh, the God of Mr. Hill. Uh, hi, uh, the, you know, the way for God. Uh, and then everything ceased. Yeah. 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 Why? So they would be dependent upon the Roman Catholic Church. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 12 on to verse 15. But what I do, that I will do, that I may cut off occasion from them which desire occasion, like the Roman Catholic Church and all her coadjutors, okay? That wherein they glory, they may be found even as we. For such are false apostles deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ, like we looked at in Alberto Rivera's testimony. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. And how are you going to be able to discern the difference between who is and who isn't? what is of God and what is Satan if you're reading a Bible that says God is spirit. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness whose end shall be according to their works like these Jesuit priests with their dog collars being brought in by these poor people uh, for Satan to cast out Satan, Satan going along with it all to make those people dependent on to the Roman Catholic Church. It's a trap. It's a trap. Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. 
verses 1 on to verse 13. If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort in love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels of mercies, fulfill ye my joy, that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, like we looked at in uh, uh, Alberto's uh, testimony there, you know, being done in strife and vain glory, to bring uh, glory onto the Roman Catholic Church. Yeah. But in lowliness of mind, let each other, each esteem other better than themselves. Self-sacrifice, charity. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself, and became obedient unto the death, unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore, God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. That at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And the devils also believe and tremble. And as we already looked at, the man possessed with the devil uh, legion, what did he do? Got down on his knees and worshiped the Lord. Knew who he was, God the Father. There is only one name given among men under heaven whereby we must, must be saved. There's power in the name of Jesus Christ. There truly is power in that name. But see, if you're not saved of the church of the living God, you trying to call upon the name of the Lord with no intention, you know, in a moment, you're a devil, you're, you're yourself, you're of this world, you're a lost devil yourself, going into these haunted houses stuff and getting around all these devils and having all this devil activity and then you being a lost person trying to with no intention of uh, coming to the Lord broken and contrite but just to protect your own rear end trying as the sons of Sceva to call upon the name of the Lord to protect you in this could the Lord come there and uh, aid you with that upon calling uh, his name yes he could he could to be a witness against you, to break you. Yes, he could. But what we see in the scriptures, someone who is dealing with a devil trying to call upon the name, use the name of the Lord Jesus when they themselves were not of the church of the living God, it doesn't work well. Yes, God could use that moment to bring you to himself. Yes, he could. We can't put leave that out of the equation. But what's that scripture? We've already looked at it. But see, those of us of the Church of the Living God, those of you who are saved, who are experiencing those kinds of things, um, number one, you, you got to take an inventory. Okay? You really do. And you probably got to do some house cleaning. Okay? Of your literal house and of your life. But remember, remember, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And remember, Paul said, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ, come out of her. He did not rebuke anybody. He didn't say that. 
He said, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ, come out of her. He didn't say, I rebuke you in the name of the Lord. No. No. Good luck with that. See, in the name of Jesus Christ, you're having devil oppression in your house. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, there's that obedience again, not as, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Work out what God hath put in himself. Work it out. Live as, live out. You're, you know, live according to the scripture. You have God the Father living within you if you are of the church of the living God. What does it say? Work out. Work out what God has put in. That doesn't mean work to save yourself. No, God forbid. Work out what God has put in. Live according to this. Okay? For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. And he would not have you to have fellowship with devils. He would not have you to have fellowship with devils. And what Jesus Christ is this? See, the Jesus Christ that Catholics tell you about is that man of sin, the son of perdition. The Jesus Christ, the God that Catholics tell you about is the Trinity. One God of which consists of three persons. A person is a spirit, soul, and body. Okay, let me prove that to you. Go to um, Philippians. Ah, uh, Philippians. Uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. You want to know what a person is, according to Scripture? Here's what a person is. Uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. <laughs> you know what? Let's read verses 15 under verse 23, okay? We got time. See that none render evil for evil unto uh, any man. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 15 under verse 23. But ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. Now, this is obviously for us who are saved. You're lost. This doesn't apply to you. Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks. In everything give thanks. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you, whether it be good or whether it be evil. In, all, in everything, give thanks. Quench not the Spirit. How do you quench the Spirit? not taking heed thereto according to thy word. Bringing things from the world into your home, into your life. Television, music, movies, video games, drugs, um, alcohol, fornication, pornography. A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. And like I said, Someone of the church of the living God who is sealed unto the day of redemption, you cannot be possessed with the devil. Give me a break. But you could be oppressed. Absolutely. Absolutely. Are you quenching the spirit? Despise not prophesying. Prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. Don't, don't look at me. 
Look at verse 22. Abstain from all appearance of evil. You know what that you know what that means? Uh, let, let me tell you. Let me show you. Uh, go back to Deuteronomy chapter seven where we began. Okay. Okay. Please. Deuteronomy chapter seven, verses twenty-five on to verse twenty-six. The graven images of their gods shall ye burn with fire. Thou shalt not desire the silver or gold that is on them, nor take it unto thee, lest thou be snared therein. For it is an abomination to the Lord thy God. Neither shalt thou bring an abomination into thine house, lest thou be a cursed thing like it. But thou shalt utterly detest it, and thou shalt utterly abhor extreme hatred. Abhor it, for it is a cursed thing. Go back to Thessalonians chapter 5. Verse 23. Here's what a person is. We are made in the image of God. We don't all look the same. But I know that genius. What does that mean? And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's what a person is. And for the Catholics to tell you that one God and three persons, a person is a spirit, soul, and body. So what is that? Nine gods? And you also keep in mind, uh, John, just very, very quickly, John chapter 8. John chapter 8, verse 24. <laughs> okay, John chapter 8, verse 24. Jesus said, of verse 23 and 24, And he said unto them, Ye are from beneath, I am from above. Ye are of this world, I am not of this world. I said therefore unto you, that ye shall die in your sins. For if ye believe not that I am He, ye shall die in your sins. If you believe not that I am He, what does that mean? Oh, the third person of the satanic trinity? I am He. What does that mean? Hmm? What does that mean? John chapter 14. John chapter 14. Beginning at verse 5. Um, on to... Oh. Verse 11. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also. And from henceforth ye know him, and have seen him. Philip saith unto him, Lord, shew us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Unless you believe I am he, ye shall die in your sins. Uh, unless you believe what? Jesus Christ is the Father. Oh! Jesus saith unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, show us the Father? Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me as the soul, the Godhead, spirit, soul, and body, okay? The Holy Ghost is the spirit. God the Father is the soul. The Word made flesh is the body. The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself. But the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. One God, consisting of spirit, soul, and body. Not, not 
the God that the Jesuits, Roman Catholicism, tell you. That's not God. That's Satan. That's satanic. You know, here in Illinois, in the township called Bull Valley, there was a place called the House with No Corners. Um, you can probably Wikipedia that, Wikipedia that, if I guess. But it was a house that was literally built with no corners. The inside of it all had rounded corners because the architect and builder of that house believed that ghosts dwelt in corners. Okay, And that place was haunted, is haunted. It's now the Bull Valley Police Station. Okay, One time, myself and a friend, long ago when I was lost, we went to the house with no corners. It was under renovation. And, I mean, it was tore up. Drywall off of the thing, off the walls. The floor was gone. You could see the, like, girders or the whatever. Uh, so you can look into the scary-looking basement. But they had, like, a piece of uh, wood going across so people can walk across, okay? And it was a, was a square-looking house. But it was, like I said, it was called the house with no corners. Everything was rounded, okay? No corners in that house. But as, I, as we walked in, me and a friend of mine at that time, uh, we walked in through the front door. It was unlocked, and the door was open, and the back door was open also. I was here, I was here, and my friend was over here, okay? And where I was standing, I could see upstairs there, and there were one, two, three doors, um, uh, three doorways, right there up, up top there and all of them were open okay there was so there was three doorways there a doorway there behind my buddy and a doorway there behind me and we were in there you know just checking things out it was a still day there was no wind no wind whatsoever none none while my friend and i were standing there in the i would guess the living room all of a sudden, there was no wind. Every door, I was standing here, I could see those three and that door behind my friend. My friend was facing me, he only saw the door behind me. Every door in that place, in one moment, shut at the same time. Boom! At the same time. I saw, you know, with my, my vision, all of them shut at the same time. And I could hear, you know, I, I felt the force of that. It was like, whoa! And Mike, that was his friend, my, my friend's name, he's like, whoa! And we're like, wow. And that silence after hearing that loud slam! Needless to say, we tucked tailed and bolted right away. It was a still day, no wind. And all of a sudden, five doors shut at the same time. Then there's a place here in Woodstock, um, the old courthouse. And you can Wikipedia this, the old courthouse here in Woodstock. Um, at the time, uh, well, right now there's an art museum for Chester Gould. Um, they rebuilt the top of it. And it was actually the courthouse of Illinois. The upper place was the courthouse. And um, uh, on the bottom part where the police station was and the morgue was, <laughs> they had a restaurant. Uh, at the time when I worked there as a lost man, it was called the Tavern on the Square. And the kitchen was the morgue area. Kind of creepy when you look into it. And the actual old cells were on the one side of it, and you could walk up to the judge's chambers and everything. It was pretty creepy. One night, while everybody was gone, there was nobody else in that building except a uh, couple employees. Myself, my then uh, girlfriend, who was a married woman, I addressed this in my testimony at the time, my mother and the dishwasher, okay? His name was Tony. There were only four of us in that building. We know that. We started hearing this thunking sound, like somebody hitting metal. And we were like, what is that? 
So we kind of investigated it. And the way it was, was the kitchen was here, which was the morgue. And out this way, there was this bar area. And they had the jail cells where people would like could reserve seating. And there was a metal door that you could open up. And the actual cells were right there. Like, um, you know, squared looking prison cells. Okay. They had renovated this one cell area for tables where people could eat and whatnot. But the actual cells were over on this area shut off by a steel door. Okay. And that's what we thought we heard. And we, the four of us, you know, uh, we went up there, you know, to inspect. But this knocking sound was moving. It was moving. Getting louder too, by the way. So there was a stairway. Here were the cells. Here was a stairway that went up like this to one of these things and went that way. So we went up there. The sound of clunking, hitting. It sounded similar to someone uh, doing construction work, okay? We get up to the top of the stairway. And now if you would go to the left were the judge's quarters. And right in front of us was this hallway that did one of these things where the judge would go through and go into the courtroom, okay? And over here, there was other stuff and whatnot. We didn't check that out. It was pretty scary. Um, the noise was getting louder louder and it was more than just this it was like stuff like that and it was getting louder it was getting louder so we went through the hallway to the judge's chamber into the big courtroom pretty dark i mean there were windows so there was light but it was pretty dark we get in there right the sound starts to get deafening i mean loud loud we were the only ones in there man okay we were the only ones there and we could hear this bang 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 bang, bang. and underneath our feet okay underneath our feet we could boom 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 people we could feel it under our feet okay all this noise we were the only ones in that building okay we were the only ones no one else was there. We know. We checked. Okay. We inquired the previous day when we told the owner. Because when we left, uh, uh, my then girlfriend at the time, the married woman, I addressed that in my testimony. I was lost at the time. She wrote a note. It's like, Steve, I can't. We, we explained later. We all gave testimony of it. You know, it's like we had to get out of there. But anyway, we could feel boom, boom, boom underneath our feet. The dishwasher, Tony did one of these things, boom, jumped up into the air and made a, ah, and stopped like that, stopped when he did that, all stopped, all the noise stopped, just like that, when he jumped on the floor like that, the stuff that we could feel under our feet stopped, just like that, and very similar to the door slamming incident in Bow Valley, that horrific silence, that ringing in your ears? Needless to say, <laughs> needless to say, we bolted. We bolted. So, yes, we have to, and I was lost at that time. I wasn't a safe man. Okay? Now, none of us were saved, obviously. You know, at that time when I was lost, I was having an affair with a married woman. So why did that happen? I don't know. We had all of us, myself, my then girlfriend, the married woman, Tony, my mother, we were all lost. We had devilish things in our lives and we had this happen to us. Same at the house with no corners. Yeah. 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 These, these things happen, people. They are real. And the reality is, when those kinds of things happen, let's, for one, it's not of God. It's of the devil. And when it's in your life, as the church of the living God, you have to remember that we have been called out of Egypt to be ambassadors for Christ. So if these things are happening in your life, what are you doing? 
What are you bringing in that ought not to be there? And if you're lost, <laughs> get saved. Because you might be going through some of those things so that the Lord can save you, to bring you to the Lord that you might become saved by Him, by grace through faith. Okay? Keep that in mind. But yeah, yeah, brethren, yeah. Ghosts, hauntings, that kind of stuff, it's real. It is real. And like I said, for those of you of the Church of the Living God, if you're experiencing that kind of stuff, you need to stop and take inventory. And if you're lost, you need to get saved. Because as, I've, as we've shown you, as I, have you been shown, as we've seen, the only answer to any of it is Jesus Christ, God our Father. So, that's going to be it for this video. Um, this video was brought about by certain information I became aware of by a dearly beloved brother. Um, so, you know, uh, again, if you're of the Church of the Living God, you need to really take an inventory. You know, you have to see why these things are happening. What is going on? If it's not you, it's got to be somebody else. And if it's not somebody else, there's got to be something there. There has to be a portal there. There has to be a window, a door open. Let the Lord Jesus Christ close the door. So, Because who can uh, open what he uh, shuts and who can shut what he has opened? So, That's going to be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching this if you do. Thank you, brethren, sisters, Church of the Living God. We love you and we are praying for so many of you. Thank you so much for your prayers for us. We covet them. Thank you for those of you who do help us. Thank you. Because if it wasn't for you, if it wasn't for the Lord through you, we'd be gone. We'd be goners. Praise the Lord for you. And we will see you in the next video.